Good morning. My name is Thomas Clemens, and uh, I'm the owner of the Prize Staff Office here in Lake Charles. And I'm in my other role, I'm also on the task for, on executive board of the chamber. And we, I chair the task force of uh, diversity and inclusion. And what we're trying to accomplish with this task force is we're trying to make sure that we take into account what local businesses are experiencing as a result of the pandemic and the two storms, and most recently the, uh, the ice storm. And we're fortunate in this in this sense that we found some willing participants to share their stories. And we, we, we're glad to have them today. This will be just the first of some seminars we, would, we, we, we will be doing quarterly, and it's the first one. And fortunately today we have Ms. Malika Hurst Trahan, who's a member of our task force, and she's uh, graciously agreed to moderate this panel. And uh, I will turn it over to her. Well, good, good morning. Um, I would like to thank everybody for participating. And I do know that, you know, we're so excited to be approaching the, a short weekend. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we would like to introduce the participants. We have Miss Tina, Tina Higgins, Higgins mm -hmm. and with, with franchise owner of Cru Travel Cruise. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Travel Advisor of Cruise Planners and Ms. Cheryl Piper. Um, first of all, I'd like to start off with Ms. Higgins and um, just trying to tell us about your business and how long you've been involved and where are you at now? Well, I bought the franchise in 2016, um, really got it going in 2017, uh, um, kind of full-blown, but um, I am a full-blown travel agent. Uh, the cruise planner's name is a little um, misleading. A lot of people think it's just cruises, but I, we are a full-service uh, travel agent. And um, yeah, the, the pandemic, of course, shut us down pretty much completely. Um, it's getting back. Uh, cruising has not started back, but some of the other stuff has started back. But it is what it is, so... Well, thank you, um, and we'll uh, we'll have a couple other questions to discuss as well too. Um, Ms. Piper uh, was with, as I said, with Edible Arrangements, and just trying to just tell us exactly how long you've been involved with that that business and where you're at now. Yes, I'm Cheryl Piper, and we have come, as our theme say, just the wilder community and the feeling with goodness. And we are uh, we started in 2017. Uh, we started our new business. Uh, we actually started talking about it in 2016, and then off the ground in 2017. So we've been doing it for four years. This will be our fourth year. Right now in our business, where we're, we had to shut down. Um, I guess for the hurricanes, we were fortunate enough for COVID because we were essential, we were able to stay open and we can talk about that more. So we have done pretty well um, as we move forward, we're looking to do greater things. Uh, and once again, um, Valentine's Mother's Day are big, big days. So we had one before COVID, one after. So we have been thriving very well and, and succeeding so far. Well, good deal. Um, and I'll go back to Miss Tina. Um, as you know that we've all uh, had to endure two hurricanes, a snowstorm, uh, COVID, and just trying to uh, weather the storm. But how has your recovery be and what do you see in the future for your business as far as with the, the cruising and the travel agency? Well, I think, like I said, the, the, the cruise lines have not been allowed to start back up again. So um, that's still totally shut down. The uh, resort uh, resorts are opening back up. I think a lot of people, especially here in Lake Charles with the hurricanes, you know, travel's just not been at the forefront of people's um, priorities. So uh, as the pandemic started easing up in the hurricane, so for me, it's it's been really hard. I mean, uh, pretty much I, I didn't make any money last year. So that was, you know, but that's okay. Um, it, it, hopefully it'll pick up soon, but um, it's it's been really difficult. But the people are starting to want, I, I guess people are getting, uh, antsy and wanting to start moving around and doing things. So hopefully that will help. I have had, I have a few bookings on the books, but not much. 
Right. Well, of course, we did see the uh, there was uh, somebody that was interviewed last night on the news as well. But my question is, um, with the travel industry that you're in, um, how is it? Or because you know the talk is now the the co the vaccination passport. Is that going to be something that you see that will have to happen just in order to travel, whether it's a cruise or to um, resorts? I think it will be. I I think it would help to even for me. I mean, as a travel agent, I'm still leery about traveling uh, anywhere. I'll I'll book somebody, but I'm still concerned. Um, but so yeah, I think that that is going to be a big thing. Um, I know there are, there are a lot of people that are resistant to that, um, but yeah, I don't see how we we not do something like that because you know this is this is global it's not just us it's the whole world and we have to find a way to to be able to do it safe to travel safely um well so good I, deal um and this is another question and i'll ask both you ladies about this um have you had or did a, you apply for any government assistance to try to help uh, get the keep the business afloat during this time of COVID and also during the hurricanes as well. Um, I'll go to Miss Piper first on this one. Yes, yes, we did. We applied for the PPP and we actually got the funding. And I, I think we were just one that went out after it at the beginning and we were able to get it on the first round. Uh, and also we were able to receive funds from the Pathway Small Business Recovery Program because we applied for that grant also. And I know the city has grants, but we, we didn't apply for those as of yet. So yes, we did. We were able to get some go that assistance, which really helped us a lot because once again, we had to lay off employees, even though we stayed open, we had to limit the number of people that was actually working for us. Ms. Tina? Well, I was not able to um, apply as I understand. Well, I, I guess I could have applied, but I wasn't eligible because I didn't, um, I guess in the previous years, I hadn't made as much money as was required to, uh, 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 to get the, um, the PPP. And I mean, I'm a, I, I don't have employees as such. I do have a, a one associate, but um, so it, it's just me. And so I did not, but I did get um, some of the pathway grant money just yesterday. <laughs> so hopefully that will, I can start doing some, some advertising and maybe start getting some, some things going, um, getting the word out that travel is starting back up again. Um, well, what is one of the lessons that you may have learned through, uh, you know, we've all been uh, enduring this, <laughs> so to speak, but what is one of the lessons that you've learned and one, one takeaway that you will say, okay, I need to put this in practice going forward just to prepare, um, prayerfully nothing else happens like this again in our lifetime, but, you know, just to try to weather the storm and also just to prepare for the future. Ms. Piper? Uh, look, and this is my husband's answer. <laughs> we did discuss this, and his thing was that we need to make sure oops, we have business interruption insurance because that was that was so important. That was one of the things we did have. So we did have that business interruption insurance. And he said, and to be sure that we read the policy, I think that was a big takeaway for us to, to know that we had that, even though we lost products, we were able to use our insurance in order. And the second thing I would say personally is just to be flexible and, and to know how to increase your communication with your team. Uh, we were meeting on Monday nights as a team because this is a family business, but we had to increase our um, communication as the week went on two or three times a week, change our plans and make that pivot around and say, let's do this differently. And we had to think outside the box. And we also, uh, another takeaway would be to to make sure that you're, if you have employees, stay in communication with them. That was so important because they all came back to work for us. And I can't say enough thank you and gratitude to them, regardless of what we were offering as incentives for the, from the federal government. These, our team returned twice with us because they wanted to work and they wanted to be involved in helping the community. So um, I would say just being flexibility for my part in communication. And Miss Tina, the same question. I think from from my 
the important, especially with, with travel and if, if something like this does happen again, um, a lot of people don't realize that there is um, travel protection insurance. And I, I always offer it, but I haven't pushed it. A lot of people kind of push back and say, I don't need that. I'm fine. Um, some of my, my clients actually lost money when, when things just shut down. Um, or their, their money is just sitting there, whether it's in flight credits or uh, resort credits, and they, they have a certain time to use it. So that is one of the things that I need to, I, I plan to push more with, with my clients is how the necessity of having something like that um, in case, I mean, you have to be, be ready. And, and, you know, it's, people don't uh, budget that into their, their trip. So I need to spend time educating them on that. All right. Um, so uh, what as business owners do you think that, you know, as I said, we've been through two hurricanes, we've been through two ice storms, we've been through COVID and 2020 has just been uh, a year that we never saw coming. So with that said, you know, what other advice can you give to other business owners that may be watching this to say, hey, here's, here's some other takeaways as well. Okay. Uh, I would first of all say, uh, continue that you increase your knowledge and look at your business plan and make sure in your plan that you have uh, revisited it to have emergency plans and things that you can do in there as far as your business. And just be able to have innovative and think out of the box because that is so important as we were making this switch. Uh, there's five of us, I, I'm the lady and my husband and my three boys, but as we met, we still had to make sure that we were thinking outside of the box because things just couldn't be done the way it, it was before. So I, my main thing was say, you gotta have that plan. Once you get that business plan, be ready to readjust it, study it, uh, look at the things that we've gone through already and just readjust and make plans for hurricanes and things like that, because we're going to have them. They might not, hopefully they're not going to be like they was before, but, um, and we were blessed. Well, I want to say that in our brick and mortar, because we didn't have any damage to our brick and mortar, just a shattered window. But I tell people it was shattered, but it didn't break. So the same thing for our community. So, um, once again, I, that's one of the main things is to have that plan. And if you get that plan in place, you can work with that. Ms. Ms. Tina? I, I agree with, uh, with Ms. Piper. And just to try to be as flexible as possible and, and just be ready for anything that could happen or at least be able to, to kind of pivot if, if yeah. things don't go the way um, you expect them to go. Yes, you need to have a plan A and a B and a C too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, I do know where your location is, Ms. Piper. So um, that area was, uh, you know, built fairly, fairly new. So that is, that did help with some of those situations. But how has the location around you been as far as other businesses in the area as well? Well, the businesses that are right there where we are seem to, I mean, like you say, the building was fairly new. So we done, everybody there has done very well. We have just, once again, once we reopened, we had to change some things. Uh, I was like, she was saying earlier, we're not just edible arrangements now. We've added some extra things in there. We have treats, we have chocolate, we have cheesecakes. Uh, the corporate office saw a need to add extra because of the pandemic and because of the way we even have uh, what they call chocolate dipping stations that parents can buy to take home to actually work with their children at home and allow them to dip. So uh, as far as the businesses around us, all of us have had to some way adjust and change some things that we're doing. But right now um, they seem to be doing okay. We're not back where we once were, but we know that if we keep pushing like we are and keep adding new strategies that we will get back there. And Ms. Tina, how have your location been and how have you kind of other businesses around the area where you're located at as well? Well, I am pretty much an at-home business and online business. So um, my home had minor damage compared to some of the, uh, the, the other 
uh, places in Lake Charles. So, but so I was able, once we got power back, I was able to come back and be, uh, you know, from the hurricane, I was able to continue working. But the other part of it, because it is, an, you know, it's pretty much an online business, I can work from anywhere that I've got an internet connection. So that part hasn't affected um, me at all, thankfully. And well, the I'll, I'll, organization has a really great uh, support system and, and they, you know, they built all of these great web tools that we, we use so that uh, I can work from, I can work from the beach. <laughs> <laughs> well, trust me, we would all love to be at the beach right now. I know yeah. I would. Um, but what has, um, what do you think will be the, the pivot point for, you know, for you? as to say, okay, I know you talked about the travel insurance and, and educating the participants on that more, but what else you think needs to be the pivot point as far as increasing the sales, um, getting the word out, just trying to say, hey, um, I do know that more people are getting vaccinated, which is a good thing, um, but just to say, how, how can we help you and how, you know, what, what's going to be your pivot point for your business? I think a big thing, you know, a lot of people know that you can, I mean, people can book their own travel. And, and there is a, you know, there is a, um, there was a time, even before I bought this franchise, that I wasn't sure that travel advisory or travel agents were a viable entity because people, you know, can easily go online and book things. I think now more than ever, it's gonna, there is a time for a resurgence in, in, in travel advisory because, because of, the, of COVID and the, the, I mean, it is a very fluid market right now. There, you know, every, uh, you know, airline is doing things differently. Every resort, they're changing their policies daily. I think if people really want to spend money on travel, they need to use an advisor who is constantly being educated on what's, you know, all of the changes, our vendors are working with us. Um, I think this is gonna be a, a resurgence of, of, of the travel advisor. And I am trying to, you know, we gotta get that, I wanna get that word out that we're here to support you. And it doesn't cost them any more money. A lot of people, that's another misconception that, you know, a travel agent is gonna cost me money. It doesn't. Uh, actually, we try, to, we, we try to save you money. So that, you know, it's just getting the word out try to educate people as much as possible. And one of the questions that I did not ask, uh, well, I'll let you ask that, that question as well, Ms. Piper. I know you talked about y'all selling more additional products within the edible arrangement uh, entity, but what other pivot points did you have to make as well? Uh, fle flexibility in the scheduling of, of the employees. Once again, they left, but once again, we had two people that stayed on staff, uh, networking with other um, surrounding businesses that uh, had hurricanes and, and had gone through the same thing. We, what did you do? So we, we called and we talked and, and just our presence on Facebook, continue to have our social media presence. Even though we weren't in the city, my home was, my home is, 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 is basically damaged, seriously damaged, and we're not in our home. So when we all had to evacuate and go, we actually went four different places and ways. So being remotely and online, and while we were in those various cities, we were able to, we were in Lafayette, so we were able to connect with the edible there just to talk to them, to give us some strategies, and also to connect back to Lake Charles, our community, where where we know uh, businesses have been destroyed, what do we need to do next? What's our next? So I, I truly know that networking with others is just, uh, that was a big pointer. That's something that we were doing and we will continue to do more of it because it is so important. Well, uh, one of the questions that I did not ask either one of y'all, but are y'all both chamber members? And if you were, when did you join and why did you join? And how has connecting with the chamber uh, helped you as far as networking go as well too? Ms. Tina? Um, I think I joined in 2017, 16 or 17, um, I can't remember. But, um, cause I had, I came from more of a, um, 
from an IT background or prior to this. So I knew nothing about running a business. So uh, the chamber has, has been very helpful from, to me uh, with that. I, um, I serve on the, um, the small business committee. I think I'm the chairman again this year. I was supposed to be chair last year and then we kind of got shut down. But, um, and so I've been asked to be the chair again whenever we can start back up meeting. So yeah, it's been, I mean, just to meet people, network with people from a you know, business standpoint and try to learn as much as I can because uh, I was like a fish out of water when I started this. <laughs> Now, did you go through the incubator as well to get started, or you? How did you come about? I met with the, with uh, Donna Little at the uh, small uh, small business administration, or yeah, and um, she kind of gave me some guidance. I did not go through the incubator uh, process, um, and I mean, this business was a. Um, I was able to retire uh, from my previous job, and this was my keep myself busy in, in retirement because I knew I was, I mean, I was fairly young to be retiring, but I wanted to do something different. And so that, um, but that was my process. I went through, through Donna and then I went ahead and bought the franchise and just kind of hit the ground running. Well, good deal. Um, Ms. Piper? I, I believe uh, we, we joined year one, which basically like she was saying, because we, we wanted to be uh, networking with someone that knew, I would say more than I did because I come from another background too, an educator, but I do have a business major in my house and two business majors in my house. So uh, they had the experience there and we all had our little knack of experience as we moved out as a family. But we just wanted to have the support of the chamber because we knew that they supported small businesses. And I had visited, once again, I talked to Donald and I actually have been to several of the network lunch and lunch meetings where I've gained knowledge. So I, I felt that it was a good opportunity for not only just the business, but as me as a female coming from another background to be able to be part of the chamber so that I could learn more about businesses and the things that we needed to do. And it's just a, a good support system. And we receive a lot of economic data of the community. So that was highly important to me because I do know the data drives what we do and where we're going. Good deal. Okay, and I know you said that you was able to apply for the first round of the PPP loan and um, made some adjustments to apply for the second one. And how has um, how has that impacted? Um, I know you were able to pay employees, make some changes within the business, but what uh, were you able to do any other? Any other grants besides the ones that you have and what other assistance can you offer other business owners that may have been still trying to get back up and running because of COVID for one and then the, se the second one is because of the hurricane? We apply for the first PPP and we receive that. Uh, so that that fund, we didn't apply for the second but once again that I know the city has some grants out there that we didn't apply for that either but we did receive the uh, money from the um, chamber. So we, we appreciate that. Uh, those were just, you have to just continue to look and, and be open to grant writing. And I guess I wasn't a whole lot I had to write for one of them, but you know, I, I'm, that's what I did as an educator. So I brought that to the table. So anytime there's a grant, it just kind of comes across the desk, my desk <laughs> family. So I would say just continue to look for funding sources. Uh, continue to look for grants and things out there that really could help them. Once again, those funds did help pay our lease, our, our, our brick and mortar. So we were very appreciative of the funds that we received and the pay our, pay our employees so that they can continue to work. So it's just a matter of, I guess, Googling and researching in order to get more and use your own line. Because once again, like I said, what's kept us afloat a lot is our Facebook presence, even when we were down, uh, we kept our Facebook going uh, as far as let the community know we're still here, we're down, but we're coming back and that sort of things. Yeah. Um, Ms. Tina, I know you said that you were not able, but do you feel like with the next round that came out um, with some regulations that changed, do you feel like you will be able to apply for any type of government assistance other than what you've already received as well? Um, 
I'm looking into that possibility. Um, I'm, I haven't done a, um, I haven't seen the new, um, the new regulations, but it's definitely something I, I'm looking into and hoping I can. I hope we can. And um, again, as I said, I know everybody's itching to get travel um, going, me, myself as well. Um, what other places do you recommend right now that are maybe open to receiving? And I know you said that you're not 100% comfortable yet, just yet with traveling, but those of us that are, you know, maybe you can offer some suggestions and kind of just help promote your business while you're on here as well. Well, there's a lot of domestic travel that's that's available. A lot of um, the a lot of places in the Caribbean are available. The um, the Mexico is 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 big. The um, Dominican. There are a lot of places that are open. The resorts are working with the uh, the the U.S. regulation that we have to be tested within three days of coming back into the United States. Um, all of the resorts are offering uh, free testing. If by chance somebody gets there and contracts COVID and has to uh, quarantine, they are offering, you know, letting them stay there up to 14 days to quarantine, um, you know, just stay in your room and order room service, but it's all, it's all free. Um, so there are some possibilities there um, that people, you know, if, if people want to go, it's there and they are, they, the, the resorts, the, the vendors, they are all working with um, the clients to try to, to get, you know, all the airlines have uh, offering no change fees. So if somebody gets sick at the last minute and needs to change a flight, go, you know, three weeks later, they are working with them. So they, there's, there are a lot of possibilities there. Well, good deal. Um, Ms. Piper, I know I've used your, uh, your business a couple of times for maybe those non-traditional um, like an anniversary or birthday for a male recipient to make <laughs> so it, they don't always get flowers but they do get edible arrangements so how can we help increase your uh, visibility with your business as well just uh, continue to but put the word out uh, we like I said we use Facebook and our social media uh, we've used magazines and other things that we need to do to get the information out. So word of mouth is always the best way. And for those special occasions, our Mother's Day, our Valentine's, we did a lot of get well and a lot of appreciation uh, uh, arrangements, uh, cheesecakes. Once again, uh, we Edible just went out and we're doing a whole lot of other things. It's not just Edible arrangements. We even have flowers now. So um, they go along with the with the flowers you can eat and you can also purchase the others. So uh, once again, just getting the word out by word of mouth and once again, checking out Facebook and our internet and the things that uh, we have out there. Good deal. Thomas, is there anything you wanna ask? Yeah, I do have a couple of things. I, I know we talked about the PPP loan and uh, being in business myself, I'm somewhat familiar with that process and uh, I, I know how much it's helped me. And But at the same time, it's not designed for all businesses. It's mainly designed for what the, what the, uh, what it stands for, payroll protection program. And a lot of businesses, if you don't have payroll, it's not going to be helpful to you because that's the forgiveness aspect because what it's designed to do is keep people who are already under your employment, keep them gainful employed while we go through this pandemic and all the rest of that. But what about the SBA? Have either one of you, and I, I, you could take it one time, had any dealings with the SBA? Because there are serious, there's a couple of loans that we're eligible for in this area. And I know at one time they had a presence here over at the Seed Center. Uh, there's disaster loans that apply to everything related to Laura and also for Delta. And then there's also the EIDL loans that will, be, will apply as a result of the pandemic. Either one of you had any kind of dealings with the SBA? If so, could you elaborate on your experiences? I have not. I, 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 I have not. It's no, we, look for we haven't either. either. Yeah, but that's something we could look into. I do get oh, emails sorry. and different information from the small business, but we haven't looked into it at all, no. Yeah, it's certainly something I would strongly encourage both of you to look into, mainly because uh, it's, it's there for businesses who are in a position just like 
uh, we all find ourselves in in Southwest Louisiana. And because of the uh, scenario with the storms, uh, we it's a separate disaster loans that apply to Laura and, and Delta that uh, you probably would be eligible for. And all businesses uh, throughout the country are eligible to apply for the EIDL loans that uh, are related to the pandemic. And these loans are very, very low interest loans. And for the most part, uh, you, they got some very favorable terms as far as uh, payback. Most of the times, uh, you don't start have to pay back the loans until at least about a year after you receive the, the, the funding. And I think I would strongly encourage both of you to take a look into it because uh, the SBA is, is there for us. I mean, it's a government entity. And I think you'll find that they're extremely, help, extremely helpful. Like anything else government related, of course, they're gonna ask you for a barrage of uh, paperwork. You, you can get prepared for that, but that's no different from what you had to prepare for, for to apply for the PPP loan. And that's to be expected. But at the same time, I wouldn't let that be a deterrent. I wouldn't let it discourage me. But that's why I was just uh, being a small business. I think it's something else that you could tap into that uh, right now, I think would kind of suit your needs. Because when it comes to financing a business, we know that you can either finance it with, with debt or you can finance it with equity. And if you're going to finance it with debt, you might as well uh, finance it with something that's very favorable terms as far as the low, low interest and uh, also the amount of time you got before you have to start paying it. So I would strongly encourage that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I Another question I have to, have to do is, has to do with uh, your level of optimism because uh, I do know that being a small business owner myself and we're fortunate enough from the standpoint of our first, are we coming up on our first year anniversary? We will be open next month will be our third year. And I'm saying for third, third year anniversary since we've opened our doors and um, there's the challenges associated with that. But I also think it's a rewarding feeling when you can continue to uh, keep the doors open and you can uh, persevere. I know that we were doing somewhat fairly well. I thought anyway, we were on the up, upward tick prior to the pandemic. And like a lot of other businesses, when the national stay at home order was issued, uh, we lost a great portion of our uh, client base almost virtually overnight. And I didn't dwell on it too much, mainly because it fell in the category of something I had no control over. I had no control over a pandemic, just like you guys had no control over a pandemic. The only thing you could do is just try and persevere and, and survive it. But once the, once the stay at home order was lifted in June, what we found was that uh, we got our business back up to where it was prior to this to the shutdown rather quickly, uh, and we uh, I think a lot of that is I think you can credit that to hard work and and making and, and reputation that you build in the community. People get somewhat familiar with you. Is is it was a whole lot different trying to build it back up than when we was trying to build our business up from the start when we first opened it, but as we were selling along and doing fairly well and everything was really progressing, then what happened is no different than what happened with a lot of other businesses, then the storms came. And a lot of businesses are not gonna survive this. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. I mean, a lot of businesses are not gonna survive it. Uh, a lot of businesses were already wobbling and uh, were struggling prior to, after the pandemic. And then when these storms hit, that just turned out to be the knockout blow. But I was determined and my sister was determined, who's my business partner, was that uh, we were going to survive this. And one of the challenges that we had, and I just want you to speak to the challenges that you guys have, is that the nature of our business is uh, we have a bill and collect business. And uh, it's not like a retail business where you open up the door, people come and spend your money, you got money instantly in your cash register. No, we, we sign on clients, we build clients, we collect from clients. And that's a delayed process as far as getting your revenue base. And the challenge we have associated with that is we have a staff of four people and they are very diligent. They're very hardworking. I love them to the core. I appreciate them. Don't know if we still have the doors open without them. But at the same time, it got, it got to be a challenge. It got to be a challenge. It got to be a challenge. We want because in the end, so we did, and we made sure that uh, we were going to keep our staff on our payroll. We was going to keep them paid. We was going to keep them intact for a variety of reasons. Number one, as I said, we couldn't survive without them because what we do is not 
brain surgery. I, I emphasize that all the time, but at the same time, there are nuances associated with it. And for us to put somebody off the street and bring them in and get them familiar with what we do in a time and during, during the middle of a pandemic and after storm wasn't very, very practical. But the main reason why we did it, we just felt like it was the right thing to do. I mean, if you got to bite the bullet and do what it, whatever it requires to keep your staff intact and keep these people employed, well, then we just felt it was incumbent upon us to do it, mainly because they had been with us through thick and thin. They've been with us prior to the pandemic. They've been with us, a couple of them had been with us when we first opened our doors. So they, they paid their dues, they had sweat equity. And we just felt like on top of everything else, now wasn't the time to be trying to add to their, to their misery by laying them off, anything like that. So in a lot of cases, we had to go to some of our other uh, creditors and make it clear to, to them that, hey, we trying to survive this. We're going to do what we can as far as securing government assistance. But in the meantime, our priority was keeping our staff paid. And that's what we did. And I don't think we'd still be open right now if we hadn't elected to make that decision. I don't have no regrets about it simply because uh, you either committed to somebody or not. And it's easy to say you committed to somebody during the good times and then when something goes a little bit astray, it goes a little bit negative, all of a sudden you realize, hey, I wasn't as committed as I thought I was. But no, we wanted to make sure that the proof was in the pudding. They, they uh, appreciated it and I appreciate them. And that's the reason why we still open. And I just wanted you to guys, either one of you would just kind of speak to, it's easy to just kind of want to just, hey, shut this thing down. I've been through a lot, it's been rough, but listen to both of you talk. I'm not picking up on it. I'm picking on both of you, extremely, extremely optimistic, despite everything that you've gone through. And I just wanted to talk to you a little bit opt optimism, where does it derive from and uh, how you keep it going? I'll start with you, Ms. Pike. Oh, I, we just, once again, speaking to the employees, that was that was our challenge. Like I said, we kept two on that was full-time workers. Our part-time workers are mainly, were mainly Magni students. And we, I mean, and we thrived on that because we hired them all through. Uh, some of them started as freshmen and now they're, they're getting ready to be seniors. So they stay with us. But in the meantime, that was a challenge because once again, we had to do everything remotely uh, as a team. And I just, we just feel very positive about where we are and what we can become. I guess we just continue to believe that things are gonna get better and the way they get better is that we continue to research, we continue to uh, gain that knowledge that we need in order that we can make the adjustments. And also just to believe in the team that we have working with us because they have great ideas and they've shared some of those things with us in order to keep us moving and keep us afloat. So, um, once again, I, I agree with you on the challenge, but because once again, they were great employees. And, and to be honest, they, they could have jobs other places where they could make more money, but they keep coming back to work with us and to be there. And I think it's because we have just decided what plan, what can we do in order to continue to encourage them while they're going through, what can we do for them and what, what can they see us do for others? Um, we actually came back to the city during the storm and, and our corporate along with our neighboring um, edible arrangements helped us uh, prepare fruit salads to take out to everybody. And so there we had our, some of our employees who came back. So it was just to keep, I think to keep our employees uh, connected to us even though they weren't working at that time so that they will be once again, like you said, able to come back and we can start making that alignment and that flow so we can move smoothly back into where we were. And to just make sure we had the product was a big deal for us. Um, just getting the product to our city, getting our product here in time to do the arrangements, to do the necessary things. Because of COVID, uh, a lot of the places and where we get our products from, uh, it was just taking, a, it was a slow process. So then we had to, once again, the challenge was to make sure we were getting the fruit here in time to do what we had to do. So we wouldn't have to double basically double buy fruit because it wasn't coming in time in order to get an inventory from somewhere else. So that was one of our other things that um, was a challenge, but we do feel, we feel and know that it will return. It's not gonna return like it was. We've made those adjustments and we're hoping and praying that we, as we move forward, that we continue to grow the small business and not only grow it, but help other businesses once again, like you're having this panel today to discuss what went right and what went wrong and how we all come out of this and be so much stronger to move forward in Southwest Louisiana. 
Well, for me, I think, uh, um, again, because I, I don't have employees, it's just me that I, I have to, to worry about. Um, that's been a big burden off of my, you know, my shoulders. And it's not, the business has, ne has not been my primary source of income. So that also makes it a little easier for me to deal with um, the, the things that have happened. But what, one of the things that really encourages me is the Cruise Planners Organization. They have been really, really helpful um, because they are so affected. Um, they've done things like lowering my monthly um, franchise uh, fees, things like that, that have, I mean, they've practically cut, cut them less than half of what we normally pay. So that has been helpful. Um, we still have to keep, and they, they continue, they keep, the Facebook presence going. They keep, they do, you know, emails to my clients, things like that, that um, just kind of keep it, let people know we're still here. That's encouraging to me. And that kind of keeps, you know, I know at some point it's going to come back. Um, it's it's kind of like you were saying, um, uh, Thomas, about the getting the, the, the money coming in. Like, I don't get paid until somebody travels. I get commission on the back end. So, Pretty much that says I haven't had any income in the past year, but that's okay. It's going to come back. You know, it's, it, it, it will, it will, it will happen. I'm encouraged. And, you know, if we can get past, especially the pandemic, if we can get past this things, you know, we can get the vaccines going and we can get people, um, you know, get the numbers down, then things will pick back up. I'm, I'm encouraged by that. Okay. Did either one of you at any point in time, and I, I think I guess it might be a rhetorical question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. At any point in time, did you ever feel like, hey, it's not even worth it? I might as well just shut this business down and just be done with it, and, and just move, and just pick it up and move forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit that. <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I sort of felt like that from the beginning, but they all talked me into having the business done. <laughs> no, I it's a team of five, and like I said, it's my husband and the three boys, so. You know, when you got when you have a team, if one's down, the other one say, "No, we got this. We can pull through this." And two of our business, well, two of our business majors, but one is actually a business. He works in the business, so it's like three. So they keep us pumped up and keep us going. And even if we're shaking our heads, I always have that one that say, "We got this. Let's go get it." And also, so no, we just keep going. But there are moments when you wonder, like, "Wow, what are we doing?" Know, especially when everything happened, uh, you know, a year or two when you open and you're thinking, oh, well, my third year is going to be the year. And then, then the COVID hits and then Laura and Delta and you're saying, really? So, so you do have to pick yourself back up and say, you know, let's pull together. Let's, we didn't get in this for nothing. Um, let's, let's pull together and do what we can do to keep it going. Yeah, and I can concur. Lots of prayers. Because <laughs> I, I, I know for a long period, long stretches of time, uh, being a, being, a, being a small business owner is, is, is challenging in and of itself. It's challenges under normal times. And I know when we got started in this endeavor, uh, similar to both of you, I had no background in the staff and business. I didn't, uh, I, I, but I felt like if other people in other places, uh, other franchise owners got together and they made this thing work, I'll figure out a way to make it work too. I just think that everybody got their own learning curves. And when, once I get something, but I always also felt like, the only way I can accomplish this, I got to get the right people around me because this was never designed to be a one-man band. I was never designed to be all about me, just a just a Thomas Clemens show. It's supposed to be a team effort. And once we got a good team in place, that made it somewhat easier. But to be honest with you, uh, once the pandemic occurred and, uh, and the challenges associated with that, that came out of left field. Nobody saw that coming. But at the same time, my whole, my position on that was, okay, I didn't see it coming. I don't think the rest of the world saw it coming. But at the same time, okay, let me figure out, okay, how I'm gonna do business in the middle of a pandemic and trying to figure that process out. And then when these storms hit, it's kind of like, okay, well then, okay, now I'm figuring out how you do business in the middle of a storm in the middle of a pandemic and we'll get that figured out. But what it came, really what it come down to is 
And I always emphasize this to businesses because we also, in, in addition to being a staffing company, we, we somewhat consider ourselves consultants. We like to, we consult with all our clients. We consider our clients partners and we like to consult with them. We don't come with a cookie cutter approach as far as, okay, this is, this, you need this X amount of people. This is what you're doing. No, we like to sit down and we like to examine your whole infrastructure, your business and talk to you about, okay, we'd like to make recommendations as far as what you might need to be paying salary wise. We'll run reports and say, hey, look, the reason why you can't find good people is because the average salary in Southwest Louisiana for that particular position is paying $16 an hour. You're only paying $14. And even though you might not be what you want to hear, I'm just going to be upfront with you. People appreciate that kind of candor. People appreciate that kind of transparency. But moving forward after this pandemic, I took the position and I still take this position is that the businesses are, that are going to thrive when all of this ends, I don't mean just survive, the business is going to thrive or the business that has a certain amount of flexibility. People, but the people who've been, okay, I'm going to do it like this because this is the way I've always done it. I think you're going to go straight out of business. I think you have to show some flexibility and realize that, hey, you got to be able to roll with the punches. You got to be able to do things uh, a little bit out your comfort zone at times because really our whole world has been shook upside down. And for the most part, well, we're here to talk about it. And, and at the same time, I, I'm, I'm very, very optimistic. Uh, and I do know, and one of the reasons why we wanted to do this panel, just to be frank about it, is uh, we know being Black-owned businesses, we, we have a somewhat of a, we, we got a different challenge than everybody else. I mean, I'm, uh, we got a different challenge and we got challenges that uh, you explain to other business owners and they might not, may or may not comprehend. But that's good because we're not looking for anything extra. We just want to make sure we take all of that into consideration and then we go about doing our business. I don't want anybody to feel like, hey, I want to do business with him because he's black. But at the same time, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm not going to do business with him because he's black. I just want everybody to give us an opportunity to show what we bring to the table, show what, what we're about, show how professional we are, and just give us an opportunity. But the way I see it is this. This is the first in a series of uh, symposiums we're going to do as far as talking about doing things differently in Southwest Louisiana, bringing, bringing attention to the way things are done. And, uh, and I, I'm looking forward to it. And I want to strongly encourage both of you to participate in any kind of way, shape or form. And uh, I think we can all get through this together. That's just my feelings anyway. So Malik, I'll turn it back to you. Uh, thank you, Thomas, for that uh, added commentary. Um, it was very helpful. But one of the things that Ms. Piper did say that she was having trouble getting some of the fruit here and stuff. So did you, during that time frame, did you partner with some of the farmers market or how did you kind of overcome that challenge um, of, of trying to get it, get the fruit here on time so that you can meet the demand of your orders that was coming in? Yes, where well, we, we actually had to make sure that we called the surrounding areas where they were able to get the fruit to us. Uh, we also checked with some of our edible arrangements in Lafayette in the other areas, and they were so easy to work with us to make sure we had our inventory and actually what we needed uh, as far as uh, being able to get the fruit and everything that we needed here. So uh, that, the, the biggest, I think one of the biggest things too was once we the hurricane came and we lost our home and the two sons that were working with us actually it was so all of us displaced and all around so it was very beneficial once again that we kept that communication and that we were flexible in order and trying to order the fruit in a timely manner so that it would get here in time uh, order the inventory in a timely manner. Now, mommy, there's been times, once again, the networking was so important. We've had to drive to Lafayette or to uh, close to Baton Rouge or the Edible in Be Beaumont or wherever to get the supplies and the things that we needed because we were down. And they were, they understood where we were. So they were really willing and, and wanting to help. So, and we even had some to come as far as from Houston to be there to make sure we have what we needed uh, from our corporate office. So, yes. Well, good deal. I know you um, said, Miss Tina, that you're um, basically a one man, a one lady show, <laughs> but you did indicate that you had an assistant. How did that uh, help you or did you, are you still have an assistant right now that continues to work with you? Well, actually I have a, what's called an associate, which is some, okay. another agent who works um, through me. Um, and she's actually in Houston and hasn't really been affected. She, she's affected too, um, but no, it's not an a, assistant. I pretty much run the show here. <laughs> so. 
It, it hasn't made a difference at all. Yeah. I may need to well, look into that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. Um, well, um, as Thomas did indicate, you know, this, we're going to try to do these symposiums just to try to get people aware of other and just kind of another area, another way to kind of network and get the word out of what's going on and what challenges you may be facing as a business owner and what's going on in the area. Because, you know, we've all, as, as he said, you know, we've all had to deal with COVID. Um, our new normal is not the normal that we had a year ago. Um, having to deal with two hurricanes and still trying to come back from that as well. And then on top of that, uh, having to deal with some of the winter storms um, and what challenges that pose to the businesses as well, too. So with this said, you know, just trying to just get the word out, kind of give y'all an opportunity to voice some concerns that you may have, how you overcome some challenges and how we all can move forward together and also support you in your endeavors. Um, and at this time, I'll turn it over to Thomas and you can go ahead and close. Okay, thanks. Yes. Uh, and uh, once again, thanks for agreeing to moderate this panel. Thanks, uh, Ms. Piper. Thanks, uh, Tina, for, getting, for agreeing to participate. And before we sign off, I'd like to give both of you uh, just a couple of uh, minutes or so just to make any closing commentary that you might want to share with us. I just well, want to say that. once again, thank you to each of each one of you that was involved in putting this together. I appreciate it. I've learned some new things today. You know, I'm educated by choice. So, you know, I've been writing. So I thank you once again for um, allowing us to come. And I do look forward to working with the chamber and doing the things that we need to do and sharing our experiences as well as gaining more knowledge and understanding about small businesses and where we can go from here. So once again, thank you so much. And we look forward to working with you all in Southwest Louisiana, continue to work with you all in Southwest Louisiana. Thank you, Tina. I, I too, thank you. Yeah, th things like this, it, it, it first of all, we're, you know, working, pretty much alone. Um, a lot of times I, I feel like I'm, I'm in this uh, all by myself, but things like this really help me to realize that we are, um, we're all in this together. And I really appreciate this. And I too look forward to uh, working, you know, continuing to work with the chamber and, um, you know, networking with as many people as possible. And this, this is a, a great way to, to kind of Get me, you know, the last year has been, you know, we've all been pretty isolated. So this this helps to know that, you know, we're everybody is trying to do the same thing and get keep things going here. Okay, well, I appreciate it. And I, uh, as I said, uh, I know that uh, your story is is your story, it's personal, it's private, and just your willingness to share your story, I, I greatly appreciate it. I think I speak on behalf of the task force, we're glad to hear it. Uh, if you need anything from me, I'm not hard to find. Just uh, look up prizestaff.com slash late child. You can find me, and I look forward to having a conversation uh, with either one of you at any point in time. So feel free. Valika, thanks for everything. I'll turn it back over, and we'll just sign off. And, hey, I think it went well, and I look forward to the next one. Take care. Thank, thank you so much, and thank you all for participating <laughs> as well, too. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.